All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about these low tunnels that we've set up and how this pertains to the fig trees that we're growing here. Um, in recent videos, we did actually two videos, one on the construction of these low tunnels and then also a video on the common questions that I think you guys will have because I had the same questions. Um, if those videos aren't out yet, they will be soon. I have to edit them. Uh, but uh, I look forward to releasing those. In this video, I just want to talk about how this is really, what the impacts are on the figs because uh, it really is a game changer. And we did a video recently-ish talking about, a, it was titled A Full Methodology of Growing Figs in Colder Climates. Uh, it was a full methodology because it really is a group of techniques that I put together to form that. And a lot of it really revolves around these low tunnels now. Because we're cutting them very low every year, they're basically a crop that you could grow in such a tunnel. You know, they're not very tall. This is only three feet tall at the, at the height, at the tallest height here. So um, normally, like I said in that video, is that you would grow things like annuals and lettuces and things that need that season extension or would benefit from some sort of season extension and are low growing. Um, the fig, at least that I can think of, I'm, I was trying to think about it before making this video. I don't know of any other fruit tree or fruiting plant for that matter. Maybe I'm not really thinking. I'm even just looking around the yard. Just basically every single fruiting plant that you can grow um, other than the fig, will not be able to fruit when you cut it down to the base. You know, the fig is really special in that particular circumstance, if you think about it. Um, you can cut them all the way down to almost nothing, and they can fruit that year. It's a little difficult because they may be in some sort of hormonal imbalance, but if you look at the, you know, the, the stone fruits, a lot of them fruit on the last year's growth and require that last year's growth. Um, some of them fruit on spurs that need to be of a certain age and a, you know, the, a, the wood has to be of a certain age. You know, some of them will fruit um, on particular buds that come out of the tree. It's, uh, it's just something that requires a base, a structure uh, with some age to it. And the fig doesn't need that. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it's really one of the coolest things I think about fig trees. So because of that, you're able to do this system here. You're able to cut them back very low. You're able to get this plastic on, these tunnels set up, and the benefits are immense because everything we've ever talked about on this channel is talking about warming the soil. What does that warmth do for these figs? Uh, well, first off, let me just be the first one to tell you that uh, the difference between the outdoor temperature today, it's 58. It's sun, the sun's shining right now, but it's basically been cloudy or partly cloudy all day. It's not a clear day at all. Um, and even because it is partly cloudy, it's still a 20 degree difference between outdoors, 58 out here, it's 78 under here. I have a thermometer that I normally put in the greenhouse um, which also tracks the humidity and whatnot. So that's a pretty big difference. It's not just the air temperature though, it is the temperatures that are then warming the soil. Because at night, yeah, that 20 degree difference is gonna dissipate, it's gonna be gone. But there's a lasting effect in the soil and in the soil temperatures. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not really that big benefit of the air, it's the soil. So I wanna make that clear. now. If I bring you guys over to the greenhouse, or at least show you guys the greenhouse, I wanna just make some points that we talk about every year. And we always mention how heat is so immensely important for figs. You know, every crop that we grow has some growing degree days, the amount of heat units it takes for these things to fruit. You know, there's a base requirement of sunlight, there's a base requirement of fertilizer. But without a doubt, this greenhouse, um, gives them at a very early point of the season, these figs in here, um, the amount of heat that they need. And if I open this up, I would say, you know, roughly about half of the trees in here 
um, have fruit on them already. And it's, uh, it's only April or not even in May. And uh, it's really all because of this heater as we talk about so many times, this heater really kicks on the temperatures in here at night and keeps the nighttime temperatures above 50. And I've been doing that since um, March 1st. A lot of the trees in here woke up March 1st. Um, sometime around March 1st to March 20th, a lot of them woke up. And you can see like, this is just one example here of a variety with fruit on it. You can see them at pretty much every node. This is one of the cold adams. And I would have thought, well, you know, the cold adams would take a while to fruit because they're normally a very late fig. But, you know, even three weeks after these trees wake up, with the help of the greenhouse and how that produces all that heat and traps it all in during the day, but also with the heater, you're getting just, like I said, a ton of heat units, which is triggering and bolting these trees into flowering. That's what the fig is. It's an inside out flower. And the cold adams, like I said, they require a lot of heat units, but even three weeks in this greenhouse after they wake up across the board, cold adam blanc, cold adam noir, roja, grease, um, they're all putting out fruit with the help of the heat in here. So the difference between the low tunnels and the greenhouse is gonna be that heater. However, I don't really need the heater in the ground because the ground temperatures are pretty stable, are they not? Right, I'm trying to use this heater to keep things in this greenhouse above 50 because if the root temperatures are above 50, there's going to be some sort of activity on these plants. The, the metabolisms are going to start running and start going. If the root zones are less than 50, like, you know, as an example, my potted trees here on the patio, these trees are not kept above 50 all day or all night. Yes, it is 58 degrees out here. It was, I think, a little bit over 60 today. Um, you know, that is warming the soil, but if I were to take the temperature readings here at night as an example, these trees metabolically are doing very little because of the lack of temperatures. So that's why I keep it above 50 in the greenhouse, but in the ground, in these low tunnels, the root temperatures are kept above 50 because the, the ground is just staying warmer. Um, the ground is a lot more difficult to heat, um, but it's also being trapped in here, as I said, during the day with these low tunnels. And as I said, the, the key difference is not the air temperatures in the greenhouse, but the, the soil temperatures. And if we achieve that, we are gonna have immense success getting these trees to bolt and flower at a very early date. Um, so I have to take some soil temperature readings. I will do that pretty soon. But I think the real point here that I think is worth making is really what I just said, but you know, I'm gonna be able to, without a doubt, with these low tunnels, get fruit, as I said, very early. So I think one of the differences between the greenhouse and this is that this, these low tunnels are not gonna be as quick as what's going on in the greenhouse. So like I said, the cold adams are putting out fruit three weeks after they wake up from dormancy. Um, I imagine these trees may take a bit longer, maybe three, maybe five, maybe four weeks. Um, you know, my very, very early varieties in the greenhouse, they may only take two weeks to start fruiting after dormancy. And some of these trees here, I would imagine, like I said, I think four or five weeks is, pr is a pretty good estimate which means that if I uncover these low tunnels or set them up in the spring, March 1st, let's say it takes about 15 days for them to actually wake up, because that's normally what I do with the greenhouse is that I turn the heater on this year, February 15th, they woke up March 1st. So three weeks after March 1st, they fruit. So we'll wake these, uh, we'll basically in a sense, turn on the heater with these low tunnels by uncovering them or setting them up around March 1st. March 15th, they'll wake up. Four to five weeks after March 15th, I'll have fruit 
on those trees, which nets me somewhere around April 15th. Let's say April to f April 15th to May 1st, I should have fruit. In fact, I think right around now is when I would see fruit on a lot of these figs. If I had these set up March 1st, we just got them set up here, guys. I would already have fruit, I think, on my trees. Fast forward 90 days from today, that puts us at July 20th. Um, so that. That is pretty insane to get fruit in the ground here by July 20th. I mean, I don't think it's a guarantee. Uh, those are the first fruits of the year, but uh, I mean, you guys know what I'm saying now, right? I mean, it's, it's coming, it's be get, becoming a lot clearer, isn't it? And that's sort of why I went into this whole spiel about why these container figs are pretty much obsolete. Um, because the container figs will fruit by August 1st without any sort of assistance from this plastic or a heater. Now I think, I think July 20th is actually a, probably an overshot. It's probably an overestimate of when these trees will actually fruit. I think it's a conservative estimate is probably a better word to, to say it. So you know I would say even maybe even July 1st or July 15th I could be expecting fruit off of these trees. And um, yeah, I, I, I just, again, I think that would completely eliminate all the work, money, and, uh, and time that's spent into the container figs when you could just do this. And as I showed you guys in those videos talking about how to set this up, um, all the common questions and all that, you got to see firsthand really just how easy it is to put them up, to take them down. They cost me about $400 for 500 square feet of, of low tunnel. Um, so yeah, it seems like a no-brainer to me. Um, yeah, I want to thank you guys here for watching this video, uh, sticking to the end here and following along with this because this is really what we're going to be doing from now on and it, it just, like I said, it makes a whole lot of sense. If you guys still have questions, post them down below and check out our blog, figboss.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you all soon, all right? Take care.